I'm going to tell you, when it comes to the Australian agriculture sector, the raw stats are really quite staggering. Australian agriculture uses 55% of our land. It uses 74% of our water, but it comprises just 13.6% of our goods and services exports, 2.7% of our total economy and 2.2% of our total employment. Now, these are the headlines from the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences report into the agriculture sector out today. And ABEAR's Executive Director is Jared Greenville, who joins me now. Jared, always good to have you on the program. I mean, those, those stats in themselves says, astonishingly, how much the agriculture sector uses, but how relatively little it puts in in comparison with, say, the services sector or the construction industry, for example. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So you're right, the, the agriculture sector has, a, I guess, a now a relatively small contribution to Australia's overall GDP and, and production. But in particular, like the, the businesses, and there's around 88,000 farm businesses across the country, they are significant stewards of our landmass. And as you say, that they're also a significant user of a, a number of our environmental resources, particularly water. And so they do play a big role in the overall kind of landscape management of the country. And although, you know, it's a small part of GDP and maybe a small part of employment, they do bring in a fairly outsized impact in terms of our export revenues, as you say, about you know, a significant share of that goods and services export. So the one thing that you identify in this report, though, is productivity. Like so many other people are talking about this, but what you're saying is that they face their own crisis on productivity. They've either got to improve or otherwise farm incomes could go backwards. Yeah, that's right. And so, like other sectors in the economy at the moment, productivity in agriculture for the last, since 2000 really, has really dipped off and fallen and we've averaged about 0.6%. And that's a little bit above the, the market average in, in most years, but it is a declining trend from when we saw a reform period and also a period where there was global, globally strong in, um, productivity growth from the, the you know, 1990s through to 2000s. Now, the sector's got a number of challenges it's facing, particularly around sustainability emissions and, and also its contribution to the net zero transition. And what's going to be really important for the sector to kind of get, get through that and the further changes in climate is to continue to grow productivity, but also to ensure that the reforms that it's undertaking and so forth, that we've got a mindset to making sure that we're driving them in an efficient way. OK, so is the real answer to that productivity for farms to amalgamate as you've got an ageing farming sector as well? And this is one of the real problems, is trying to gain labour inside our agriculture sector, that eventually we're going to have much larger agriculture concerns and so therefore that could drive some of these productivity improvements? Yeah, there's most probably a fair degree of scope for further farm consolidation, and that's been a, one of the key drivers of past productivity performance. And that farm consolidation really does, as you say, drive economies of scale. It also helps build some of that resilience to, to different climatic events and seasonal conditions, and that will improve productivity. But I think it's not the only thing. There's a few other things that are likely worth looking at, and particularly maintaining investments in research and development. So Australia's always been a bit of a innovation leader and a front ahead of the curve. And so I think we really need to make sure that we, we position ourselves that way, um, particularly as costs start to rise and also competitors catch up. So that's another important aspect. The, the reality is, though, that farm incomes have been strong over the past four years since the drought broke back in 2020. And so that really has given the farmers some of the respite to actually build their, uh, build the reserves to try and cope with whatever comes next in terms of the climate change. Yeah, we've seen farm cash incomes and, and farm income growth over, well, prior to this year, there have been three, three of the record years in terms of overall farm cash incomes, profits and, and overall sector value. And that has built up a bit of reserve for hopefully some investments that will drive not only consolidation, but also, importantly, some of the investments in you know, technology and machinery that will drive productivity growth. Um, and that should set us up. And we're also expecting when we look to next year you know, some better conditions than we saw this year. So there should be some more scope. I'll tell you what's interesting. Is it a good time to be a farmer in Australia right now, Jared, based on the reports, based on all your knowledge about this? Yeah, it's been a good, good time to be a farmer. And so the farm sector has, you know, grown by 
no, quite significantly. So last year we saw sector value hit 90, close to $95 billion, $94 billion, which is really a standout. Now this year with weather conditions, it fell back to 80, but we're expecting it to go up to 85 again billion next year, which is the third highest on record. And so this, this conditions that we've had, but also international prices of recent years, has been a really you know, good season or good period for, for the farm sector here in Australia. Um, and really now is, I guess, the time to capitalise on that and look forward. I'll tell you, Jared, always good to have you in the program and many thanks for your time today. Excellent. Thanks again for having me on.